last week I went through my schedule prediction on the Sunday drive and go back and watch it. There would probably be a card right here. Right above my head. Go back and watch it. I had predicted that the Bills would win a certain number of games. Everyone thought that I have lost my marbles. However, I just wanted to be clear, and I even put it in one of the comments. I am too far into it now. I can't <laughs> too turn deep. around. I'm too deep. Even if I agree that it probably should be 12 and 4, 11 and 5, I can't back out now. Yeah. All right. That thing is in stone. It's going to be on my grave. Yeah. It's going to be everywhere I go. I'm going to have a t shirt made. Everything's good. Listen, I still wear my A.G. McCarran Bills shirt around town. He does. So, like, we're men of, we're nothing if not men of principle. That's very true. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, so what we are going to do, we're going to have to go through the schedule because we had a couple of uh, you know, hashtag nations like, Paul, what is your prediction for the schedule? Yeah. However, we're going to do it with a little bit of a twist. Paul's going to read the schedule off, the games. We're going to go through them as again. once again. He's going to give me his prediction for the game, win or loss, why. I have to, I have to argue with you. <laughs> I have to okay. try to find a counter to whatever Paul says. Now, if he has them, let's just say he has them going twelve and four. I have them going four and twelve. I have oh to argue every point oh. against you. Oh my god! And I think, if not anything, it'll be entertaining. Let's go. Let's let's, let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> Week one, home at the Jets. Well, I think the Jets are awful. <laughs> so that is a big dub, one o'clock at home. Uh, simply put, the Jets have, have just put in too many new pieces. There's no way in an abbreviated offseason they're going to get that offensive line and that wide receiver group on the right page. No way in the world. Uh, the defense, defense isn't bad. But I have more faith in the Bills being prepared for that game than I have the Jets being able to put it together for that game. No way the Jets are able to score more points than the Bills. The Bills are going to walk away with that one. Okay. Well, just in recent history, my friend, Paul, yeah, my good buddy, um, the Bills went 1-1 one -on -one against the Jets last year. Mm -hmm. I understand one game was a throwaway game. Yeah. End of the season. I understand that. But it still counts as a loss, sir. You still did not defeat the team that you were playing. That's one. Two is this. Until C.J. Mosley went off the field, how many points did the Bills put up last year? Whoop. Donut. They put donut Whoop. up. So first game of the season, they're going to be playing it at home. I understand that. The Ralph's going to be jacked up. Or, Whoa. Ralph, new era. New era's going to be era, jacked buddy. up. I'm a, I still call it Rich, Rich Stadium. Stadium. <laughs> all the time. But it's going to be jacked up. Everyone's going to be excited. Greg Williams is going to have certain things that – Josh Allen did not see last year, or did see last year. It, it was very unsuccessful. He's going to have that team up. Uh, Jets are coming in fully reloaded on the offensive side of the ball. Le'Veon Bell's history against the Buffalo Bills is actually pretty colorful. Mm -hmm. So I think in a dogfight, the Jets pull it out. I, I will say there there is a case to be made for Greg Williams having the advantage with so many incumbents on the team. Yes. Right. So I yes. will say that uh, that of the two sides of the football, the defense will be more prepared for that game than the offense. I feel like I need a disclaimer that's always scrolling on the bottom that says I have to argue. With I you. am agreeing with <laughs> your point that that's their only chance of winning. <laughs> Uh, we yes. got away at Miami. There is no way Miami's winning more than four games this season. So well, two they're not taking. Oh yeah, two of them against the Bills. No way. No way. No way. So this is the Tua train is not going to be leaving the station yet. I, I just don't think that's possible. Again, very very remade offensive line in Miami. I do, now you got Fitz behind center, and Fitz is very good at calling protection. So yeah, he's going to keep that line together. A, for a little bit. Again, relatively incumbent wide receivers, uh, remade running back room. Lots to be excited about in Miami, but it's week two, an abbreviated offseason. There, there's no way they're going to be up to speed. You have a fully returning uh, Bills defense with exception to uh, Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson, which you easily can absorb the loss of. I just don't see... I think the Miami game later in the season is, is more likely for them to be in contention than this one. 
I just don't see it happening. Well, you know, I think Miami still has a, is a pretty stacked roster. The Buffalo Bills had a little trouble with Fitz when they were in Buffalo. A little bit of trouble you know, manning up against those really physical wide receivers. You know, like you said, it's going to be early in the year. You don't have Kevin Johnson, who was doing really well against some of them, um, the bigger wide receivers. You yep. have Levi Wallace, who tends to get a little bit pushed around a little bit. We don't know if, if, if Josh Norman's going to be pushed around as well. But you got Fitz. I like the offense. How did Jordan Howard do against the Bills last year? When oh, he came? God, stop it. Point being is that he enjoyed some success. You have Shaq Lawson, Kyle Van Noy, and basically a Patriots South now. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty and, much. And, you know, the, the, the confounding, just, just out of the gate, though, taking a step back, having to face Greg Williams mm-hmm. and then having to face a, rev- a, a, a remix of a New England Patriots defense. Mm-hmm. You got Rowe down there. You got those two corners. Um, it's, it's you're talking apples and oranges as far as the two different the defensive philosophies. Very much so. Yeah. So how is he going to adjust to the game plan? Alan, I'm talking about how is he going to adjust and how is Dable going to adjust the game plan for weeks one and two, even though there's not a lot of stuff on. Table? That was something we talked about last season, though. Was we thought that entering last season, their preparation prior to the game, their scripting calls was good, was, was outstanding. Mm-hmm. Last season, I didn't feel as strongly about it. I did no, but their adjustments were better. I think yes. than the previous yes. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. You also got to feel that you got a you got you had a second year quarterback instead of a rookie uh-huh. um, who was acclimated to the NFL a little bit better. You know, you never know. You never know. But yeah, zero and two. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, two and zero. <laughs> All right. Week three at home. You know, there's always that game that you go and you look at the schedule and say, "Man, we really shouldn't have lost that game." It happens every year. It's the Rams game. Rams. They're going to lose against the Rams. Oh, you, you, yeah. I, and again, the Rams were a formidable team. They are in They are in a wicked downward spiral. Um, um, Todd Gurley less, right? It, they're going to struggle with identity. Um, however, I think there's enough tape on the Bills' defense that they could be exposed, Right. Because the Rams are not going to be able to the, – the Rams' defense is, is in shambles, in my opinion. The offense is, again, held together with bubble gum and Band-Aids, what you called it. But they're still going to be able to put up points. The Rams game to me is the one where, again, you look at you look at it early and you're like, ah, if there's a time for us to get beat, it's probably, it's probably this game. You are outside your mind, really, with the Rams. I, I don't. I'm not a Rams believer. Don't, don't. I don't want anybody to think that I am. But I'm just trying to be realistic. There's always even, an, even yeah. a four, even a yeah. 14 win team will look back and say, God, we lost to the Dolphins. Well, I mean, the the year the Ra- the Patriots won the Super Bowl, the, when the Bills beat them 31 to nothing at home to open the season, then they lost. Yep. The, the, they beat the Bills 31 to nothing at home. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of those games you go well, right. What? Well, right. we beat the Super Bowl champion 31 nothing, but they weren't that at that point. Oh, wow. I have to actually – oh, my God. You're outside your mind. The, the way that this defense is set up, it's set up to stop the pass. It's not like L.A. is a very run-heavy team with McVay and Goff and everybody in there. Cooper Cup, dangerous. What you get for filming a TikTok while you're driving, lady? But she's a savage. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I think the defense for the Buffalo Bills will just be too overwhelming. West Coast team going over to the East Coast. It's tough. And a They're 1 o'clock play. game. That, one is o'clock, under, yes. that is underplayed, Very right? Very underplayed. Very underplayed. Um, as far as the offense is concerned, I don't even know who they have on defense anymore. Aaron Donald. That, that would be a very true test of this offensive line if they could try to control Aaron Donald because we saw a couple years ago, uh, the J.J. Watt interception return for a touchdown. Uh, I remember Eric Wood talking about, we said, listen, let's not try to revamp our entire protection scheme for one guy. I feel if the Buffalo Bills do not do that, I mean, I would love to see the collision between Spain and Aaron Donald. Just two fridges <laughs> go up against each other. Um, but, but I think that game, I can't wait to watch, side note, I can't wait to watch that game just to see Donald and Oliver, and how, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, well, that was the comparison. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. You know, I love the trench guys, I like you know, watching those. But no, they're not going to beat the Bills. You're out of your mind. They're not going to come over and stop it. So you got them at one and two. 
I, I have to. I told you. I know. Yeah. 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 You are at Vegas, uh, 425 game, October 4th. Um, there. I, I am not a John Gruden believer. If it were prudent for me to say they're not going to win a game this season, that's what I would do. I'll tell you what. Oh, God, here we go again. It never gets better, guys. Spider through life. Anyway. It's been years. I've heard this imitation for years. It never gets better. You guys like football? Was it, is my turn now to say that the, the Raiders are going to win? <laughs> why don't you? St- why don't we start with that? <laughs> you know why they're going to win because they have the the second rated most second rated quarterback <laughs> in the NFL, and Josh Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed that episode, it's right here when we talked about the most elusive backs. Uh, that you know, I like hard to argue. I like to. You know, it's hard to argue against. You know. For the same reason you said the L.A. game is that one game, I think that would be the Raiders. I, there is something to be said about taking a football team and putting them in Vegas, right? Yes. Ah, I think there's some teams, like, if you were to take, like, Tampa. And put them in Vegas? Yeah, the, the Cowboys. Not you take the Cowboys. Them, you take them Please, and put not them. The Cowboys. Not the Cowboys. But <laughs> the you, 90s Cowboys? That's no. what I mean. <laughs> It's like a blizzard. They didn't play in the snow. Uh, but <laughs> I think there's some teams with some with some culture issues that would struggle to survive a prolonged time in Vegas. I think that's I think that's, that's fair, fair to point. say. Very it's fair, fair point. to say. Um, I don't think the Bills are that problem. Like uh, it's, <laughs> that's not a concern. Okay. All right. I mean, so I got them at one and three. You got them at three and one. Yep. Sweet. Tennessee. This is exactly the game that should scare the hell out of Bills fans because Tennessee loves to run the football, and the Bills definitely had a problem controlling the interior last year. Mm-hmm. Definitely had a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill still the quarterback of this football team. The Bills are going to win that game. You mean the Ryan Tannehill that beat the Patriots in the playoffs last year? Throwing the ball three times? <laughs> I, this is tougher than I thought it was going to be. I know, right? Uh, Derrick Henry, did you have him losing? You have, you have him, no, I have the Bills winning, winning that game. The Bills winning. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe that um, revenge, I think Tennessee circled this game when it first came out because of what happened last year. Um, mm. You know, 14-7, to seven, Bills ended up becoming victorious, but that was prior to the whole Henry train taking okay. off. All right. It was with Marcus Mariota. A lot of people were like, yep. okay, well, you know, yeah. I beat him before. Well, that's exactly it. They, yeah. they beat him with Mariota. They, they beat him with Mariota. Too. They didn't beat Tannehill, led, and then by that time, you know, they, they, they have playoff experience now. That that Tennessee team has playoff experience. That offensive line, now minus Jack Conklin, mm-hmm. that's the question mark for me. But that offensive line last year, which I touted really early in the season, sure did. was bad, but then turned out to be amazing. Obviously, they got the leading rusher in the NFL. Which leading rusher in the NFL now means as much as the leading rusher in arena at this point. Sure does. Uh, but like I like I've said before, they come with a gallon of milk. Once the milk's expired, it's time to draft another one. <laughs> come on, the milk lasts longer. <laughs> Until they stop the run consistently, I will not be a. I will not be on that train. So the reason I have this marked up as a win for them is because they play the Raiders. The week before with Jacobs. All right, I look at Henry, I look at Jacobs, and I say, okay. Roll Tide. I, I think that there's there's a Roll Tide connection, right? Um, but I think there's a similarity there in the styles of player as far as how they see the field. Um, and, true, I'm, yes. and I'm – oh, if, if Tennessee if, – if the schedule went the Jets, Miami, the Rams, Tennessee, I'd be a little hesitant on the Tennessee game. Gotcha. But it doesn't. The, the Jacobs matchup is there bef- the week before. I think that's a great prep for having to deal with Henry. Um, you know, the second and third most bold. elusive backs in the NFL, according to PFF. Bullshit! <laughs> um, I can't see. So, I'm looking at God's flashlight right now. I think they're one-dimensional. Yeah. And I, I the Bills. True test for the Bills. I love it. You really think it's I a think tr- it's a true test for the, the run defense. The run defense, I think, is – you know <clears> – <throat> You're talking about in – they have to play Miami. 
They have to play Tennessee. They have to play certain defenses that are very similar mm-hmm. and come from the same tree, as, as, as we always talk about. Yep. So, in that respect, they may see a lot of similar looks. I think offensively, the Buffalo Bills will be able to move the ball. Yeah. And they'll be able to do some things. However, defensively, I, I, if they if they hold Henry underneath under 100 yards, I, I would be I would be surprised. Sand flies, stupid sand flies. All right. Looks like a rhino snot all over your car. It's like African lion safari out here. Did I ever tell you that when I was 11 and I went to African lion safari, a monkey gave birth on the hood of uh, on the hood of the car that, that we're was in? Ace Ventura too. Nope, really happened, dude. Monkey wow. monkey jumped up on top of the car, ripped monkey baby out, threw monkey baby out the car, jumped off and ran out. Totally happened. Placenta everywhere. I'm sorry if you were having breakfast while this episode came <laughs> I forget this airs at like 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Kansas City. This is a Thursday night matchup against uh, Andy Reid. Win. 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 Let's win. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. They're going to win. They're gonna win. They're gonna win. They're gonna win. Yeah. They're gonna. They're gonna wrangle. They're gonna win. They're gonna beat the Super Bowl champs. They're gonna beat the Super Bowl champs. Yep. The Buffalo Bills. Yep. Are beating the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. At home on Thursday. They sure are. How many points scored in that game? Because you know, Total? you got it. You got to Either you're gonna stop Mahomes, which nobody's done. Right. And Hill, and Clyde edwards hilaire and Travis Kelsey, <laughs> yeah. and everybody else that they have on that team. Mm-hmm. I love the teacher versus the pupil, not well, kind of, in, right. in a way, even though it was offensive defense. I love that that matchup, but you feel it's going to be a win. Yep. Win. There's no middle ground for this game. Nope. It's either a 10-3 game or, or it's, it's a 40-41. Yeah. 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 So, Absolutely. Yeah, the, here's, here's why I think the Bills are going to win. First off, it's a matchup nightmare for Buffalo. Truth be told, right? Because, Hill, you really want to play man with somebody over the top, right? Yes. That, that's really what you want to do. Absolutely. Buffalo, not great at that. That's one of the reasons why Kelsey's so effective. It's most teams, that's how they play Hill. They want to play a man with somebody over the top, and that frees up Kelsey. That frees up, you know, any other underneath target for Mahomes. That's what makes that team so dangerous is Hill. So I don't – that while, because it's a matchup nightmare for Buffalo – that's one of the reasons why I think they win because they know they can't play man over top. They can't. They, they can't do it. You could. You could. But that's how they beat everybody. No, but you could though. Ah, uh, I disagree. You put Tre'Davious White on Kelsey. If you're already playing over the top, if you're already playing over, over the top, the top it doesn't matter who's yeah, covering. Doesn't matter top. who's covering. No. That's interesting. So unless you want to, because. Why are you it, arguing for them to no, win? No, I, I just like good football talk. Okay. <laughs> but with a, with a uh, with an Andy Reid offense, you know the running backs are heavily involved. Very West Coast so. offense yep. are heavily Very involved in the so. pass game. So you're going to need Milano and Edmonds to take, be taking care of the running backs. Clyde right. Hilaire and whoever else is in there. Right. That's why you just can't immediately put a name a linebacker yeah, on, 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 on Kelsey. Kelsey. You can't do it. Even though I'd love to see that heavyweight battle of Kelsey and sure. uh, Edmonds go. Sure. We know that uh, Tredavious White majority – of his, he's, he's amazing. However, he has trouble with speed, not with physicality. Right. So yeah. him against Kelsey is an amazing matchup well, and, that, that can manifest. And we, we saw the Bills cheat quite a bit last year by dropping Poyer down. And Poyer on Kelsey scares me. I don't like that. I don't like no. Poyer on Kelsey. No. So who covers Watkins? I mean, is Watkins even healthy by then? <laughs> if the final score is, is uh, 44 to 41. So it's 85 points. I was going to say, what's the what's the chances that there are as many tables broken as points scored in the game? <laughs> I was just – but – so I have to – yeah, the, no one stopped Mahomes in that offense yet. This is an easy argument to make. This is it, very easy. Yeah, this is – most people are going to say Kansas City's probably – There's just so, there's so many weapons that they have offensively. The Buffalo Bills with McDermott and Frazier being the cornerback mm-hmm. and secondary whisperers. Yep. I think it'd be very interesting, but they just have too much familiarity. However, my friend, going from Henry and the Titans 
to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Just that's, like you mentioned before. That's a big change. Oh my God. That's a big change. Next up. Okay, so I still have the Bills at uh, one, two, three, four, five, and one. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Jets, I have them at one and five, and yep. Brian Dable has been fired. <laughs> God, stop talking about my dream scenario, all right? <laughs> One and five, you can still win the division. Yeah, at nine and seven. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> nine and seven. <laughs> uh, you have uh, your away New York Jets, October 25th, one o'clock game. A dub. You have them sweeping the Jets. I do have them sweeping the Jets. Yeah, I'm not even arguing with you on this one. No. <laughs> They're not, the Jets are not sweeping the Bills. No, no, no. Uh, that's, a, that's a dub. Well, according to my schedule, because I had to argue with you for all of these, the Bills are one and five. The Jets don't do not take them seriously, <laughs> and the Bills don't beat them. Next, uh, Patriots at home. So this is Jared Stidham's seventh start at this point. Do you really think he's going to be starting? Yeah, it's that's that's why he didn't draft yeah. one. Are you saying that Jared Stidham? I mean, are you really believing that Brian Hoyer is the quarterback? He has more that? experience with McDaniel's than anybody. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, I've seen Brian Hoyer, Hoyer play quarterback. Let them go three and three and watch what Belichick does. Oh, They'll man. tell McDaniel's to play Hoyer. Uh, either way, Hoyer or Stidham doesn't change my doesn't change my perspective on this. Uh, I like Sonny Michelle the running back position. I do too. But he's pretty one dimensional. Uh, yes, and that's why I they have seven running backs. Right? Yeah, uh, you lost Devlin, so he's done. Right? Yes. Um, your Starnecki's gone, so your offensive line that was just piecemealed together. Yes. Lord only knows what that's actually going to look like. So I, I just don't think that the Patriots are going to be able to hold off the pressure of the Bills' defense. I don't think this is a Buffalo will outscore the Patriots scenario. I think this is the Patriots really are going to struggle to handle pressure because they're going to have a quarterback that isn't directing traffic for them anymore. You lost Brady, you lost Skarnacki. That's that's good enough for me. You think that's a 21-10 game for the Bills? Listen, I, like that. I like James White, right? Yes. I do. I like James White as a player. But James White is not dangerous without Tom Brady. Doing. That's a great point. So, you know, you're, you're taking 15 targets away per game right there. Gone. 15? 15. 15 targets. Gone. He, I, think, I think he has a hundred more receptions than carries. Yeah, some, it is yeah, correct. Yeah, it's it's some some crazy. Some guy, it's not exact. I know, but it's the, he has more receptions than carries in his life. It's yeah, it's all I could think of when I when I was thinking about you know what was going to be missing out of the Patriots' offense and, and targets for James White was one of the very first things that came to my mind was um, and, you know in the movie A Christmas Story we was talking about the dogs running in to eat the turkey. Gone. It was just gone. <laughs> That's that's all I could that kept playing in my head. At home against Seattle, another West Coast team at one o'clock. Yes, I'm not a believer in Seattle. I haven't been. Um, I know Russell Wilson's the kind of the great equalizer there, but they really outside of Metcalf, who I'm not super high on either. I really don't see any wide receiver targets to scare the hell out of me from a matchup perspective. I don't. I Tyler Lockett doesn't scare me. DK Metcalf doesn't scare me. He doesn't? No. Not it terrifies me. <laughs> not against the secondary. Well, I mean, yeah, if I were in a weight room, I would <laughs> I'd feel, you know, a little He's insecure. throwing 45 plates around like frisbees. Right, exactly. I mean, uh, it'd, it'd take four of me to spot him. <laughs> I just, you know, I am very high. You know, when, when there's players that I, I'm very high on. I'm very high on them for a reason. Le'Veon Bell happens to be one of those guys. Julio Jones is one of those guys. Right. Ru- Russell Wilson is one of those guys that it doesn't matter what you decide to throw at this guy. Metcalf, Lockett, now Greg Olson. Right. All that stuff intertwined. He he finds a way to get it done. But he we, always finds a way. And it's 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 fascinating you bring that up because we talked about Josh Allen this week as well about how many times does he need to throw to be effective. Russell Wilson doesn't have to throw the ball 35 times to be an effective quarterback. No, he, he manages the game so well that he utilizes the opportunities to throw effectively. So while he may only be throwing 27 times a game, they're well-placed play calls. Yes. He, they're, they're well, he checks out when he's supposed to check out. He manages the game really well. He knows well. what he's doing. Yeah, he, yeah. He's an and that's something that we don't have with quarterback. That. Yeah, exactly. we don't have with that. With that. Yeah. Either way, Bill's by a million. To quote Daniel Garis, 
Bills by a million. Bills by a million. I, actually, Daniel did not say that. I quoted him in the comment section this week as saying Bills by by a million. He's like, that's not what I said. I just yeah, Bills by a million. I just like Wilson. I think he's gonna pull it out for him. Eight and one. One and eight. Arizona Sweet. away. They're gonna lose this game. Arizona's really good. I still think you're outside of your mind. Arizona's really good. Arizona's really good? They're really good. I think they're going to win that division. I really do. I really think they're going to win that division. And I hate Kyler Murray. I hate him. Yes. I hate Kyler Kyler Murray. Murray. And it was, and it's not, it's not so much any specific one thing. You got to guys remember, prior to the draft last year, Paul does an insane amount of research. You guys need to know this. He doesn't insane the audience. So one of the things that Paul likes doing is listening to interviews with the players. There's there's something inherently interesting about a guy, how he speaks, how he answers questions, how things certain things happen. The, the number of text messages and phone calls I got from him about Kyler Murray oh, interviews, God. this guy's such a... <laughs> he, just, he just is cocky and is arrogant and like... Oh, I'm, I'm I'm not answering that question. Like yeah. you're in the you, what? Who was the wide receiver you were telling me about almost like two or three years ago that said I can run a nine? Like, what's your favorite route? The go route. Oh God, who was it? Was that, was that Matthews? Oh, who was, that, was it? That wasn't Jordan Matthews. Oh, this was oh, we're talking years ago. Yeah, this was yeah, years yeah. Ago. Oh yeah, that that was one of the reasons I started to get really into Jordan Matthews was he broke down all the different play calls. And on all his route and, and, and all the route calls. But like boom, 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 boom. That's, on this coverage, this is what I run. On this coverage, this is what I run. Yeah, on this coverage, this is what I run. It manifested much. That's 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 bad. That's, that's what you IQ. need though. But that's but that's why that's why he was a tradable commodity for Philly. Because he walks into a meeting room, you don't have to teach him anything. Yeah. Homeboy knows what he's doing. <laughs> you can call whatever play you want, be like, Jordan, here's what I need you to do against this coverage. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, Arizona scares me. It, it, I don't like this game. Arizona scares me. Hopkins, Drake, yeah, Fitzgerald, Kirk, Pat, Christian, Christian Kirk, Kirk yeah. Andy Isabella. They're dangerous, man. Who else do they have besides Isabella? They've drafted two receivers that you remember. Uh, I don't remember who the other one was. Art, uh, Art. Who was it? Uh, anyway, I don't remember. but they have a lot of weapons. I understand that their defense got is going to have Jordan Phillips now. Mm-hmm. Um, defense doesn't bother me. Offense scares me. Patrick Peterson bothers me, even though he's thirty-seven years old. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just want to be. I just want to go to one Arizona practice and see him go up against DeAndre Hopkins the whole oh, day. Oh God, that would just be fun. To watch. It would be. That would be a lot of fun. All right, Chargers game next up. Home against the Chargers. Dubs. You're talking about a Philip River list team, a Melvin Gordon list team. Although I don't really think that made much of a difference. Um, they do have Austin Eckler returning. They do have Keenan Allen. Um, outside of that, there's just nothing going for the Chargers. And this is pretty late in the season. Um, I'm totally under the belief that this is Anthony Lynn's last year as the head coach. I just don't see them being able to keep it together. That's that's it. Um, so that they're going to win this football game. Dear Lord, forgive me for all I'm about to say. The return of Tyrod Jones. <laughs> the return of Tyrod Taylor oh, to Buffalo. God. The game that you're not supposed to lose, you end up oh. losing with Austin Eckler and Tyrod coming oh. in because you know what? How do you well, sleep? In what that? else? Disclaimer. Just read the disclaimer, guys. Just read this, please. Just read this. Read it. The this. <laughs> I have to disagree with Paul on every one of these picks, so I'm selling my soul to the devil because nothing stirs up more than a Tyrod Allen argument. And if Tyrod wins, it's over. <laughs> Tyrod wins <laughs> from by, by a go route on the tight end. In between the hashes, last drive of the game, drops a 60 pound to the tight end on a go right between the hashes. That happens. If it, it, <laughs> you know, Rex Ryan will be on the table at ESPN. I told you he was a good quarterback. 
I told you. Do you know how much chaos and mayhem will manifest oh, if God. Tyrod comes oh. back into Buffalo and beats them? Do you know? I know. You know. Oh. I'm. I'm not. We're not doing shows that week if they win. I'm not doing shows that week. All right, so I've got them <laughs> losing two. We're at eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I got them at nine and two so far. Oh. Walking into San Francisco. 8-15 game. It is away. It is a West Coast game. So this is pretty late. Yeah, this year. They're going to lose this game. No, I think they're going to win. <laughs> they're going to lose this I have game. to disagree with you. Um, this, this game, I, and again, I'm going off of everything that we know about the Bills last year. This is the wor- This is worst case scenario for them. right? Okay. Running back driven team. Mm-hmm. But not just one running back like in Tennessee. A multitude of skill sets in the running back room. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, this is a bad matchup. This is a real bad matchup. For well, yeah, I mean, but, but you had them beat Tennessee. That's one dimensional. One dimensional. Okay. One dimensional. Um, yeah, I see the Bills. I see the Bills winning that game because you have to say that because Shanahan, the, the well of running backs, is going to run out. You have multiple running backs with multiple knee injuries on that team now. That's true. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. I, I I don't. You're not a believer. I don't see anything very special about it. That defense has. Like ten out of the eleven are first round picks. <laughs> they just keep drafting. They just first keep rounders. drafting first round picks. Uh-huh. That game, um, I think, because of the gauntlet you had to run a little bit earlier in the season, I think San Francisco will be a little bit more manageable. They always seem to play a lot better prime time away. Yep. When nobody feels that they should. But I mean, according to your schedule, they're nine and two going uh-huh. into San Francisco. Yeah. That game might be one of the most watched games. Oh, Even absolutely. overriding Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Year. Yeah. So without a doubt. And because without I doubt. disagree with you, so Steelers at home. Sunday night football. Sounds familiar. Steelers are tough late in the season, man. They are. They're always tough late in the season. Yes. You know where I'm going with this, right? What? We got a back to backer. Those they lose this. back to back. And Pittsburgh is so tough late in the season, dude. They're all they always play oh tough God. late in the season. Tomlin always, and Roethlisberger always, will not always. even be there by the time late in the yeah, season. I know, I know. They want oh, so what you're saying? You're saying you're saying Mason Rudolph and whoever the OC is is going to pull this one out? Yeah, it. I, Pittsburgh it always plays this one tough. Hey. And here's the thing: Big Ben actually is playing with purpose, right? If last he if he comes back. Right, and all yeah. uh, everything he's that he's it. going to right, he's going to come back as the final, you know, I told you I could do it statement. That's that's his whole driver is to say, listen, I know I look like I should be on Duck Dynasty. However, as I said before, Pittsburgh always plays tough late in the season because they always just hang on by a thread, and Ben has something to play for, and that. And, and say what you want about, about Ben Roethlisberger. He's one of the best quarterbacks that has, in my opinion, top 15 quarterback to have ever played this game. Just always consistently dangerous. Always dangerous. You look at that quarterback class, yeah. right? And you've got four of the top 15 quarterbacks who have ever played the game in, in that class, right? Ben has to be one of them. You know what's, what's very interesting? Yeah, that class. You know what's very interesting? When they had... Um Good Marino and Kelly battling it out. Yeah. And then Elway was always there. Right. He was always a great quarterback, but people were talking about, um, you know, Jim Kelly going to four straight or Marino right. breaking all the passing titles. Right. So then we, we come to modern times a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. Brady was the one always going to the ball, mm-hmm. and Manning was the one setting all the records. Yep. And then who's the – the third guy in that equation for me, also wearing number seven, was always Roethlisberger right. because – he won two, went to three. Yeah, he's a, he's an effective quarterback. He's always dangerous. You, he's a mountain to bring down. Right, you can't do that. So, uh, you know what? It, does he have does he have breezes accuracy? No. Does he have control like like Brady? No. Does he have all these other things that? Yeah. Can he? I mean, he even said it himself on a, on America's Game, which was a great one of the America's Game. He goes, "Am I a pocket passer? No, but I can make po- passes from the pocket. Mm-hmm. Am I a running quarterback? No, but I can run." When I have to, mm-hmm. he's just like you said. You had a perfect word for him. He's been consistent, mm-hmm. not barring injury. What he's had the last you know few years, he's been a very consistent quarterback, and he's won. Yeah. So you can't say that 
okay, Ben Rogers or whatever. He's, you know, who cares? He knows the game. He knows what's expected of him. Yep. When he's under center, he's going to give you a real challenge. Yeah. Going into Denver, no quarterback. Questionable running How back. How dare tonight. you? Drew Lock. Drew Lock. No quarterback. Uh, questionable running back room. Gordon? Yeah. Gord? Yeah. Lindsey? Yeah. Listen, Gordon's not going to play nice. Like, that's all there is to it. Gordon is not a play nice type of character. So, do I want Gordon around my young quarterback? No thanks. Perfectly fine. Letting John Elway figure that mess out. That's fine. He can figure that mess out. He hasn't done it yet. No. Well, and look at the wide receiver room, and that's point number three. <laughs> Their wide receiver room is terrible. I don't even know who's in there. Yeah, exactly. Deshaun Hamilton, uh, Cortland Sutton. Love both of those guys, actually. <laughs> Noah Fant. Got to get targets to make catches, bro. Noah Fant. Got to get targets to make catches. Vic Fangio. I'm done. <laughs> Bills win. <laughs> No, it, no, it is at mile high. It, it is at mile yeah, high late yeah. in the season, which everybody always talks about. That air is tough. That air is tough, especially late in the season. Mm -hmm. Your body's pretty broken down. You're having a tough time. And playing at Denver late in the season is a challenge. Yes. Buffalo's still going to win. Though. Yeah, I just don't think Denver can score enough points to keep up with Buffalo. They don't need to. Bills aren't going to score anything. Oh, God. Whatever. All right, Patriots away, 8-15 game. So oh, man, it's going to be another, yeah. No, no, they're not. Ten, they're 10 and 4. 10 and 4. Yeah. Uh, Patriots, 8-15 game. Perfect game, perfect time for a national beatdown. I know the Bills are going to get hurt. No way. No way. I understand Belichick late in the season, again, really challenging, but... Just to be able to do a schedule prediction with two Bills against the Patriots wins and have them be, like, really legitimate, like, I'm pretty confident the Bills are going to win both those games. Won't Newton be there by that time? Oh, God, don't curse me with that. I know I said it, but don't curse me with that. I, I couldn't sleep that night. I put it into the universe. Did that even make an episode this week? It did. Okay. It's in the Patriots at the end of the Patriots, the the Patriots episode. You guys oh. watched it, right? Right. I don't think there's much more to say about it. You don't know who the quarterback is. The running back room is, again, a product of, um, you know, I think their effectiveness at the running back position was a product of Brady managing the defense. Okay. So, I just, so 11 and 4. 11 and 4. Closing up against the Dolphins. 11 and 4. You, here's the deal. <laughs> of 11 and 4. Come on, no. Here's the deal. You're not. 11 and 4. Okay. 11 and 4 is a is you won the division, right? Why? 11 and 4 is you've got this division locked up. You, you won every much. game in the division so far. So far, according to my schedule prediction, you have not lost a divisional game. Ooh. Right? You have not lost a divisional game, and the games that you lost were against the NFC teams. Hey, but we're talking first round buy. This is first round buy territory. Because think about it, right? I've crafted the Bills' schedule. What games did they lose? They lost to the Rams. They lost to the Rams. They lost to the Niners. They lost to Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> and they lost to one AFC. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. So if they lose to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh going to win 12 games? No. They're not going to win 12 games. All I'm saying is. I feel like the I get, the Miami game oh is really tough for me to call because the Bills could have a first round bye with a per, with a near perfect AFC record intact going into Miami. The question becomes: Do you do 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 you go for that twelve win season? Do you punch that ticket? I think you do. You think you punch that I ticket? I think you do. I if feel, you got if you got a first round bye already locked. There's no reason. There's no reason, There's no reason to play the Miami. I don't know if eleven and five locks up home field. Even with only losing one game in the AFC. I don't know. That's tough. But if the rest of the Kansas City schedule is the only loss they have to, they go twelve and four. Mm. Or, yeah, they go twelve and four. All right, because so I think they could. So Bills show up, beat Miami by fourteen. Walk into the first round. Walk past the first, first round. round. I feel like the end of Fight Club. 
Like when you finally <laughs> found out he was talking to himself, I didn't realize you were saying they were losing only the NFC. What are you team. shady? What are you giving away the endings of movies? <laughs> people have never seen Fight Club. We have, we have some people who aren't even old enough to watch rated R movies yet, Mario. No, we don't. Ninety-eight percent of our clientele <laughs> is twenty-five or above. <laughs> You're right. 